Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got a Black Ops 3 trailer analysis for you, and if you haven't already heard, the next Call of Duty game, which I'm sure will be launching in November 2015, will be Black Ops 3. This is good news for me. I was happy with Black Ops 1, very happy with Black Ops 3, and I'm ready to see what Vonderhaar is going to be bringing us. But let's jump straight into this trailer analysis. In the very beginning of the trailer, you'll hear the numbers, Mason. The numbers, Mason. What do they mean? Which probably means that we're going to get a return of Mason, at least some old flashback kind of missions, and that this is going to be a proper sequel and not a side story. That's the simplest thing we're doing today. Let's move on to the more complicated analysis. As you go through the trailer, you see the model of the guy in the Black Ops 2 case. It's the same thing once you zoom all the way out. But it's made of numbers, numbers everywhere. But not all of these numbers are random. There are sets of coordinates. The first set of coordinates, if I punch it into Google, it points me to 6 October Bridge in Egypt, which initially was very confusing, but after so I couldn't really get any picture, pictures of it either. There's no Google Street View there for whatever reason, Egypt anyway. I did some Googling and found out that this bridge is historically significant in Egypt. It's named after the 6th of October 1973 and Egyptian invasion of the Sinai Peninsula. This is where they decided to go and upend some Israeli settlers and try and claim some land. It was a bloody conflict. Israelis counterattacked a few days later, but there was a ceasefire and a peace of agreement and at the end of it Egypt ended up with more land they got a good chunk of the land that they wanted so Egypt counted this as a victory and it was also the only Egyptian victory in any of the Arab Israeli wars so to them this was very very significant they named the bridge after the date of the initiation of this battle because it's again very important to them and I assume that this could actually tie into the story you could be a secret agent working on either side either with the Egyptians or a double agent with the Egyptians or the Israeli or any of the American forces that were involved there secretly of course Russians who knows in black ops man it can be anything we can speculate it's kind of crazy like that revisionist history so it'd be kind of cool to do some Arab Israeli conflicts some old school ones in this game that could be very very interesting and also we have this Dr. Salim character the Call of Duty Snapchat changed its name to Dr. Salim a lot of the Snapchats have Dr. Salim kind of hidden somewhere if you change the filters you can see him and Salim is an Arabic name so I'm going to guess that this ties in with Dr. Dr. Salim, he's some important person working in Egypt, but that's not all we have for you today. Get a lot, actually. There's a second set of coordinates hidden on the character's gun. These were so difficult to see that the first time I typed them in, I typed them in wrong, got the incorrect location, and went on a wild goose chase for longer than I care to admit. But the correct coordinates will actually lead you to a prison in Zurich, Switzerland. I really do not speak Swiss, and I don't know these pronunciations, but it looks like Gefangus, Gefenis. Gefangnis uh, is in Zurich, Switzerland. If you look it up, you'll see that it has existed since 1916, making it kind of an older prison. It's been expanded a few times, but it's also a very small prison. It only has a capacity of 170 prisoners right now after the expansion, so I'm assuming it was much smaller before. So I'm guessing, and again, my Google foo is kind of weak here because I don't speak Swiss, and most of the articles about this I find are in Swiss, and Google Translate isn't always super useful. I'm assuming this is more of a high-profile prison. This is, as they would say in the Count of Monte Cristo where we put people whom we know are innocent. It's a very very small place, looks like a very specialized place. Moving on, this symbol shows up kind of randomly right in the middle of everything. It's actually a little bit hard to get a screenshot out of it. I'm assuming that ties into the story. I've seen it all over Twitter. I've seen it in most of my social feeds. Even J-Hub was talking about it. J-Hub took a screenshot of the Black Ops 2 update. So Black Ops 2 updated and they have the same little tree from the Call of Duty Snapchat sitting there but in higher resolution. Now he snapped, he, he uh, took a screenshot of that with his Elgato and he did some photoshoppy things and the same symbol is actually in the background right there on Black Ops 2. I truthfully do not know what this means. I've had subscribers tell me that this has something to do with a Soviet nuclear program, that this is a covert this, that there's, a, I haven't actually been able to pin this down and get a hard uh, answer as to what this means but it, I'm gonna guess it has to do with a weapons program of some kind, a spy program. It's obviously very important to the plot of this game. Maybe even the baddies. Maybe that's the symbol that all the baddies wear. Very kind of James Bond villain-esque right there. But it does show up often and you might have missed it. Going back to the words spoken in the trailer, the second set of words we get are everything you know is wrong. And given the common stories in Black Ops games, I'm gonna say that's probably right. Probably everything we know is wrong. There's some sort of master plan going on. This guy is actually bad. We're gonna reveal our true face here. We're gonna play the spy game. 
Uh, Black Ops plots have historically always been crazy. They've tied in not only historical events, but just in the, in the game they've kind of had these these alternate things like you kill Castro, but it's actually his bodyguard, or the Bay of Pigs was actually this and not that. It's in, you know, secret missions in Vietnam. Funny kind of stuff, interesting kind of stuff, but I'm expecting to see a whole lot of off-the-walls kind of banana spy plots here. But there are some details that we can narrow, we can, we can squeeze out of this. Near the end, we get a quote that says, he doesn't need his own weapons, he's got ours. And this actually reminds me of the Black Ops 2 campaign a little bit. And I'll confess right now, I did not play the Black Ops 2 campaign. I only read the summary on the COD wiki. I'm not really into COD campaigns. But it seems like it might be a more direct sequel to Black Ops 2's plot in terms of hacking and stealing tech because as the wiki indicated and my experience watching the trailers black ops 2 there is kind of this plot that a quantum computer could be used to hack anything and take over all of america's automated defenses which actually isn't that different from advanced warfare that the private corporation changed their mind and they took over the exos and the technology and all that sort of stuff and it was hard to fight back but he says he doesn't need his own weapons he's got ours i'm assuming the bad guy whoever it is maybe mendez or whoever has hacked everything he's stolen the u.s's weapons and we've got this sort of under dog plot going on where the United States or the spy agency or even the good guys are a leg down because uh, previously in Call of Duty games the good guys were kind of a leg up they always had this kind of ball in technology but in the last three we've actually not had that ghost started it with a kind of post-war depressed U.S. depressed economically is what I meant. We had advanced warfare where the private corporations have all the best tech and you have to scrap and steal it. And then this would more or less follow the trend where whatever good you had was stolen and then you had to fight against it. That would make the most sense to me. Given all of the references that we've seen so far, uh, the voice actor that voices Sergeant Frank Woods, we've got references to Mason, we've got refer re references to uh, taking our weapons, which I'm assuming is future technology, references to World War II, is Israeli conflicts, Egyptian conflicts, 1979 conflicts. We got references all over the place. The best thing I can tell you is that the campaign of this game will probably play a lot like Black Ops 1 and 2 with the timelines bouncing all over the place. I bet we go all the way from World War 2 and into the future a little bit, kind of a lot like Black Ops 2 and 1. Should be very fun. I tend to prefer those. I don't know why I never really got around to playing the Black Ops 2 campaign, probably because the multiplayer was fantastic. I had a lot of fun with the Black Ops 2 multiplayer. I know when it first came out, the community wasn't that big on it. They said it was really bad, the spawns are bad, they didn't like several aspects of it. But I personally always did enjoy the Black Ops 2 multiplayer. I thought it was one of the better balanced and playing versions of Call of Duty games, even though it might have been one of the most arcadey ones. I also very much so appreciated the bright, punchy colors. As a colorblind person, that helped me a ton. It helped me a little bit in Advanced Warfare. But this game, despite the hate when it was originally out, is now being revered as one of the better Call of Duties. A lot of people actually go back and play this in huge numbers, sometimes like hundreds of thousands of people on the weekends, which is kind of crazy. So again, for me, this is good news. This is the game people wanted. People were thirsty for Black Ops 2. They, they you know, wanted a Black Ops 3, so now we're getting a Black Ops 3 sequel. Black Ops 2 also had very solid guns. They were very, minus like, okay, so in the very beginning, they're a bit wonky. That's like every Call of Duty game after the first patch or so. Very good balance, very good, unique feeling weapons. Weapons that I can still go back to two years later later, load up, and each one feels like a different little baby, but I know how to play with. Uh, that sounds kind of creepy, doesn't it? But very good feeling. What you should expect from multiplayer? Well, I would expect to see an RCXD, a little exploding car, because that's been in all the Black Ops games. That's kind of their thing. If Black Ops multiplayer has a thing, it's probably the little exploding car. I would bet score streaks are back. They invented them. There's absolutely no reason at all not to bring them back. Tomahawks will be back in. Always more fun than throwing knives. Spike drones in Advanced Warfare weren't bad. Novel idea. Ultimately not as fun as Tomahawks, though. I'm gonna bet against exosuits. I could be wrong. There could be exosuits in this, but I think the community kind of got pushed back a little bit on that. A lot of the more core gamers didn't really like it, so I would bet nay on the exosuits, and I would also bet very heavily that the game is going to be esports focused. So Treyarch is kind of held up as the gold standard of esports. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the other studios too much because that could be a personal thing, but Hasbro worked with Activision, with Vonderhaar, and all these people, and they tried really hard to make Black Ops 2 a competitive esport, and they succeeded completely. They had the Codcaster, Theater Mode, uh, Easy Spectating, they had 
good balance, like they invented hardpoint just for competitive, which was really good. A lot of the maps are balanced for competitive and pubs, which was good. So the pro players, the MLG scene, they should be very happy with that. And also, they were also pretty good at taking feedback from the community and nerfing and buffing things as needed. So I'd expect a huge esport focus. That's probably going to mean the game is going to be a little bit more arcadey, again, along the lines of Advanced Warfare Black Ops 2, and a little bit less like kind of tactical, like crazy, cluttery, pubs oriented, more like MW3 and Ghost. The very different design philosophies there. But that's kind of what I would expect to see from the multiplayer. I would also expect to have to wait quite a long time for multiplayer reveals. Those don't come out in, in, anytime early. Those always come out like way, 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 way later on. Guys, that's all for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something useful here. Like, I say that all the time, but I truly hope you did. I hope you learned something here that you couldn't find somewhere else. And if you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out. This should help you remember everything. The numbers, Mason. What do they mean? Everything you know is wrong. Your life will be consumed by absolute loss. He doesn't need his own weapons. He's got ours. They'll always need men like us. Our greatest barrier is our own fear, our own doubts. The only thing holding us back is how far we are willing to go.